I am Michele, the project manager of the Icarus Teams Air Cargo Challenge Division. We are a group of about 20 aerospace engineering students at Politecnico di Torino, coming from all corners of our beautiful country, Italy. With my colleagues, we will introduce you to the work we did to develop ICOR, our UAV for the ACC 2022 competition. Let's get started. When the regulations for the ACC competition came out, we realized that they were very different from the previous ones. We needed to understand what a successful design looked like in this new edition. That's why we developed a simulator that generated many plane designs, considering structural, aerodynamics and flight mechanics properties, and then made them compete against each other in a virtual race with the same scoring system as ACC 2022. We discovered that the best design should minimize the frontal area while maximizing the carry payload. We suspect that this is a result of the low density of the new payload, the blood bags, as compared to the metal plates that were used in previous editions. Our analysis led us to steer away from the port solution that was so successful in 2019, and it led us to the current design of ICOR. ICOR has a taper wing with a wingspan of 2.4 meters. Its empty weight is about 1.8 kg, and it is designed to carry 2.4 kg of payload. ICOR is characterized by a traditional configuration, with a low wing and a T-tail, and its skin is entirely made of carbon fiber. The fuselage has a top opening to allow for the loading of the blood bags. Our strategy for the competition didn't only involve uh, the design, but uh, also the flight envelope. Once our initial plane configuration was set, we developed a script to analyze the best possible flight path. This was helpful for the pilots to understand the maneuver involved and for the flight mechanics division of the teams to understand the requirements on maneuverability and controls. Let's talk about some of the special characteristics that make ECOR so unique. We are now going to illustrate ECOR's aerodynamic features, its structure, the joints that allow the assembly of the tail, and a peculiar loading and unloading technique for the payload. The wing was one of the first components of ICOR to take shape in the design phase. The aspects that we focused on were two. One, we wanted to maximize the wingspan and the aspect ratio, and second, we wanted to have uh, two semi-wings that would fit into the transportation box without additional sectionings. As a consequence, a simple trapezoidal shape was chosen for manufacturability reasons. The airfoil is a custom one, based on the AH family. The most peculiar aspect of our wing, though, is the dihedral, which was chosen to be a positive 3 degrees on each semi-wing, to improve lateral stability. The dihedral does not start at the root of the wing, but about 18 centimeters away from the fuselage axis in order for the wing fuselage junction to provide better stiffness and strength. Another distinctive aspect of our plane concerns the structural project, especially the wing. The structure of Ico's wing is such that stringers and spark hubs are embedded in the skin of the wings. The two spark webs, instead, are kept as separate elements. The skin of the wing is a symmetrical sandwich composite where the outermost layer is made of non-woven carbon fabric and the core is in rochelle. In between these layers, there are two narrow stripes of unidirectional carbon fiber, matching the two spar webs. ICOR's mission is to provide medical aid to locations where the airfield may not be ideal. Uh, we could not risk ruining any components during takeoff and landing, and that's why we opted for a T-tail. The detail keeps the horizontal stabilizer far from the asperities of the ground, even though the structural design of the junctions of this kind of tail is more challenging. Not only this, but the regulation limitations imposed by the rhombus also made it challenging for the flight mechanics team to design a horizontal stabilizer with, at the same time, sufficient surface and tail arm. We did not let ourselves down and we came up with a solution that, during our flight tests, proved to be successful and effective. The single wheel landing system is a distinctive feature that we have introduced for the first time with this new model. It consists of a short wheeled leg and a tail skid, plus two appendages installed below the wing. 
the solution is somehow more difficult to design and install than a classic two wheels gear because it requires an accurate fine tuning. However, in spite of its cumbersome setup, the single wheel shows lower weight, friction and aerodynamic drag, but also a higher stability, which are some useful perks if the aircraft has to take off from rough surfaces. And for this air cargo challenge, one last peculiar feature is the cargo. Ikor having to carry blood bags takes its name from the fluid containing the blood of immortal creatures. Ikor carries around nine blood bags in its fuselage. The bags are held together by a string of velcro, which also maintains them fixed to the, to the fuselage of the plane, preventing them from moving around. The system also allows us to attend the fast loading and unloading of the payload, which we know can represent very valuable points to, in the competition. Once the general design of FICO was defined, it was finally time for us to start building it. All team members took part in the construction of FICO, from molds to lamination and to assembly, as we didn't rely on any outside manufacturer. For uh, molds production, we learned how to operate a numerically controlled milling machine, and uh, we used it uh, to fabricate uh, the negative uh, molds of the fuselage and the wing in uh, extruded polystyrene. Through a process of trial and error, we understood that it was very important not only to send the molds in order to eliminate the imperfections left by the tools of the machine, but uh, it was also essential to protect them properly. We learned to make uh, the molds impermeable so uh, that aggressive uh, substances uh, would not uh, ruin them. We also treat uh, uh, the molds with the specific chemicals so that they don't get damaged after the removal of, uh, of the components. For uh, some components like the tail, we used uh, positive molds with the peculiarity that uh, they remain embedded inside the final pieces. In order uh, to create the positive molds, we uh, assembled our uh, very own uh, hot wire foam cutter and then uh, we used it to cut uh, polystyrene in uh, the des desired shape. Once molds are perfect, we are ready for eliminating our composite components. This operation isn't easy at all and must be carried out with great accuracy, since each composite part is key for all structural properties. When the resin is dry and we open the vacuum bag, we separate our components from their molds very carefully trying not to damage or destroy anything in the process, especially molds. And that's how we manufacture our components. Among the most recently introduced technique for the construction of ICOR, laser cutting is the one that allows us to save a lot of time with better precision than performing by hand. In fact, this machine is able to cut quickly and with tight tolerances, a wide range of materials such as balsa or poplar. In the video, you can see the laser in action cutting the internal reinforcements of the wing, fundamental components for obtaining good structural behavior while preserving the lightness of the aircraft. Finally, one of the assets we relied upon in every edition, additive manufacturing. This technology is unrivaled when it comes to building complex shapes with a good surface finishing. In fact, we used it to produce components like the wing fuselage fillets and the winglets, which will be nearly impossible to produce by hand. The interest in additive does not end with the aerodynamic features. Another area of interest is the landing gear, where we are planning to develop a 3D printed wheel which could fit perfectly with the weight and takeoff constraints. The design, construction, and testing vehicle was an exciting enterprise that enriched our engineering backgrounds and brought us all together as a team. It was not all fun and games, though. In the last two years, we have indeed faced some tricky challenges, both technical and in terms of organization. Um, as for the challenges concerning our logistics, we all sadly know that when the ACC 2022 regulations came out, um, the world was already in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, for us, this meant that all of the team activities had to be conducted online. This was challenging, not only in terms of team building, uh, as some of us had never even seen each other before, but also in terms of being all on the same page, sharing the most up-to-date data. Moreover, uh, when the construction of ICOR started, uh, most of us were in our hometowns across Italy, far away from Turin, so only a few of the team members could attend our laboratory to take care of manufacturing. Luckily, as you can see from these images, uh, the problem was solved when the restrictions were removed. 
Well, we now have in-person meetings. We all regularly get to work on ICAR in our lab. And most importantly, we are friends with each other. The challenge we hear from the most were the engineering challenge we encountered during the manufacturing. Uh, one of the aspects we struggled with the most was dealing with uh, foam cores such as uh, Rochelle and Irex. This was the first time uh, that we experimented with uh, closed cell foams and uh, we know much about uh, the structural advantages uh, they carry but we were largely unaware of many challenges posed by their shaving. We didn't let ourselves down and uh, with a lot of patience and the creativity, we managed to find a way to form these forms into the shapes of our foils and fuselage. We can wait to discover if uh, overcoming this manufacturing challenge can turn into the age against our competitors. Working on our model for ACC 2022 gave us all the opportunity to understand hands on what it means to work on an aerospace project enriching our technical and engineering background. It is from the challenges we faced that we learned our most valuable lessons, which have been useful to improve our methods and which we will apply in our future projects. One of the things we learned is the importance of taking manufacturability into account during the design phase. For example, our original design for the landing gear prescribed a sandwich structure with an IRX core and external carbon layers. It was frustrating to see that no matter how much care we put into our manufacturing technique, our product just kept getting delaminated. We ultimately realized that the reason behind our failures was the incompatibility of our master mold with the chosen composite. We then developed an upgraded version of our landing gear and lamination finally had a positive outcome. We learn how crucial it is to design a component while always keeping in mind how that component is going to be constructed. And this is something that we will always keep in mind in our engineering careers. Our experience with the landing gear also taught us that simplicity can go a long way. It is obvious that it is impossible to absolutely replicate the perfection of a CAD in a physical component. That's why simple components that are easy to manufacture correctly can often have better performances than complicated pieces that on digital analysis might be fantastic, but that in reality are difficult to reproduce. This was a taste of all the work behind our project. ICOR started as an idea, then it became the airplane able to take off and fly as you will see. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. We thank you for your time and we can't wait to meet you all soon in Munich. In the meantime, take a glimpse of Iker's first flight. Ciao!